Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Um, as they say, the longest journey begins with the first step, and here is the first step. Um, this marks the beginning of a new series on Nietzsche's, uh, and just a quick side note, I recognize I was pronouncing his name incorrectly in the, in the first installment. I said Nietzsche, Nietzsche, it's Nietzsche. Well, um, this marks the beginning of Nietzsche's first the, the first video in my series on uh, Nietzsche's will to power. I'm going to go through the analysis pretty methodically. Um, I said in the introductory video that it should be about 50, you know, um, 50 hours, maybe 150 videos long. And I did some of the math based on the video count that I've, that I've done for other videos. And I recognize it's probably going to be substantially longer than that. Um, I'm not promising that I'm going to complete the series, but I am going to go through it as as detailed as I can possibly go through um, with as much emphasis to understanding what he means by um, the will to power and so on. Um, as you guys know, I'm not going to do any historical background information. Uh, the basic point being that Nietzsche never intended this text for publication. It wasn't written for publication. Um, and insofar as it wasn't written for publication, it, I think it makes it exceptionally well. Right? My, my, my personal belief is the stuff that an author um, keeps to him or herself, the work that the author keeps to him or herself, that's not supposed to be, that's not refined yet, that, isn't, that hasn't had all the, the edges smoothed out, that hasn't had all the arguments fleshed out. You know, that, that's really, you get a good idea of the real sense of what the author um, might be thinking. So it's one of my, of all the Nietzsche texts that I've read, it's one of my favorite. And uh, I want to begin a very, very methodical, very, very detailed, and very long. Um, not for the sake of it just being long, but because I believe the text needs this level of attention. And I've selected this text because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very impactful text. I, I find myself, as I progress throughout my academic career, coming back to the text a lot. Enough of that. Let's begin our journey. Um, again, as you guys know, you can download the notes, the banner will pop up. Um, also what I'll be doing is I'll be updating the notes um, before I actually update the video. What happened in previous series is you'd be able to see the notes when the video was uploaded. Now I'll give you time to have access to the notes and read the notes and read the text prior to me uploading the video. Um, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, that's where I would recommend where I'll give the update. So on my Facebook account, I'll inform you as to the notes being updated. If you already follow me on Facebook, then you'll know. If you don't follow me on Facebook, if we become friends on Facebook, then you'll, you'll have access to this information. Okay, so this is going to be uh, Will to Power. This is Will to Power. And um, this is going to be section one of the notes. Nietzsche's... Uh, Will to Power is broken down into notes. Notes one through, I think, uh, 1,070 something or something. So it's like um, notes one through 1,000. Um, and what I'm going to do in the notes is I'll let you know the span. So this lecture that I'm going to give today covers notes one through seven, right? It only covers seven notes out of the text. Um, as I told you before, I'm using the, um, the Kaufman text. So if you have the Kaufman text, um, follow along and, you know, Let's begin the analysis. Okay, um, Nietzsche, be Nietzsche begins by talking about um, nihilism. Uh, and he says that it is that the highest values devaluate, D E V A L U A. So, um, for Nietzsche, it is that the highest values devaluate themselves, right? There is a sense in which the things that we hold with the highest regard then become debased, become devalued, right? So the idea, in a very general sense, and as we progress through this multi-multi-part series, what you'll have is a clearer understanding of the significance and the deep meaning behind this, but at this level, it is that the things that we hold in the highest regard, with the most esteem, and the highest value, um, 
devalues themselves. It undermines that value in itself, undermines its position, right? So it's, in a sense, um, internally destructive. And um, I'm not expecting that to make much sense now, but as we progress, as I said, that will make more sense. Um, he talks about some of the things that uh, does not cause nihilism, right? So sort of this nihilistic approach, this nihilistic interpretation of reality, right? This idea of, of, of sort of dissatisfaction and apathy is, is not caused by a few things, right? So nihilism for uh, Nietzsche, nihilism is not caused is not caused by the following. The first thing that is not caused by is um, physiological degradation, right? It's not caused by uh, a biological degradation, right? It's not physiological degradation. Right, so it's not physiological degeneration, right? It's not, a de it's not the degeneration of the, the physical body. Right? That's not the cause of nihilism. The next is social distress. And we'll return to this idea of social distress uh, later in the series, but right now, um, just uh, this is the, you know, the first video of the first part of the, the series, so very sort of general cursory accounts, right? And then lastly, it's not caused by corruption. Okay, so nihilism according to Nietzsche, is not caused by physiological um, degeneration, it's not caused by social distress, it's not caused by corruption. Um, what we'll do is we'll have a better understanding in a moment of at least this cursory account, this introductory account of what nihilism is in an attempt to understand Nietzsche's approach to nihilism. Um, but first what he wants to do right from the beginning, which is always a good move, is to tell you what it's not. Nihilism is not caused by these factors. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So, um, uh, the next thing that we need to recognize is that for Nietzsche, nihilism is rooted in Christian morality. Right? So for him, he is going to say that this idea of nihilism is rooted in Christian For Nietzsche, this idea of nihilism is rooted in Christian morality. It is the morality, um, and specifically the Christian morality, not exclusively, he talks about other moralities, but specifically the Christian morality in which this nihilism is rooted. And remember, by nihilism, we're saying that the highest values devaluate themselves, right? This morality and this ethic that is espoused by the Christian tradition, and as we progress, we'll see what some of these values are specifically are, um, we'll see how those values devalue themselves, how the having of this value undermines the existence of our embodiment, that is human existence. But as, as at this very introductory level, I don't want to jump ahead too much because it's not stated in the first, I mean right now we're talking about the first, you know, paragraph of the text, so I don't want to jump ahead too much. Just understand that for uh, Nietzsche, Nihilism is rooted in Christian morality, right? So it's not rooted here, but it is rooted here. Okay, um, some of the causes for, for him, so causes, causes of, some of the causes of nihilism for Nietzsche, uh, I will want to go through that. Nihilism is caused by, and this is a quote, the end, quote, the end of moral interpretation. The end of moral interpretation. This is a very powerful quote. The end of moral right? for Nietzsche. Um, nihilism is caused by the end of moral interpretation. And I've actually provided notes just to make sense of how to understand the notes. The note is note 1.3, so in the event that you're not using the Kaufman text, just go to note 1, uh, and then the third point in note 1, note 1.3, and that's where he makes that quotation. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to integrate um, 
and be able to direct you to the text yourself so that it's not just me giving you my interpretation, 